This is Algebra 2 Lesson 2-7, Absolute Value Functions and Graphs. An absolute value function is a function in the form of f of x equals the absolute value of mx plus b plus or minus c, where m cannot be zero. Which means you're basically looking at an equation that looks like this. y equals the absolute value of x plus 2, or f of x equals uh, 3 absolute value of x minus 4 plus 6. All of those are absolute value functions. Fairly complicated absolute value functions, but not difficult to do it. The axis of symmetry is the line that divides the graph into two parts, which are mirror images of each other. So if I have an absolute value graph that looks like this, my y-axis would be my axis of symmetry because the y-axis right here puts it into two mirror images. If I fold it along the y-axis, half of the graph will land on the other half. A vertex is the turning point of an absolute value graph. It is either the minimum or maximum point. So this point down here in this graph would be the vertex, and it would be the minimum point. It would be the lowest point of the graph. All right, let's take a look at an absolute value graph for just a moment. The current function of an absolute value graph is f of x equals the absolute value of x. That's your current function. If I was to make a table of it, the table would look similar to this. So if I let x equal negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and so on. Therefore, when I graph it, I get an absolute value graph that looks like this. They're very easy to graph. Actually, you only have to graph one half of them. If I was to graph the point negative 3, 3, here's the point negative 3, 3, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1. The other points are mirror images. So if this, is, if this point here is 3 units to the left of the, uh, the y-axis, I have to go 3 units to the right for its partner. 2 units to the left, 2 units to the right, 1 unit to the right, 1 unit to the right. Okay. The slope is up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, as you can clearly see. Or down here, down, right, down, right, down, right. Okay. So you can see that they're, they're mirror images in each other. Absolute value graphs are not hard to graph. So if I'm going to graph an absolute value function, it's going to follow the same rules pretty much as what we did yesterday. So if we were to look at um, the absolute value graph of y equals absolute value of x, Here's the graph of y equals absolute value of x, 1 over 1 over. Okay, so I'm going to try to graph this to the left line really. Nice straight line that way. Nice straight line that way. So I'm going to draw a straight line. That's the value of the y equals absolute value of x. Now, if we were to follow the same rules as yesterday, this would go up 4 units. Okay. And if I was to think about it, if my original point was. 0, 0, the absolute value of 0 plus 4 moves it up 4, so it's going to follow the exact same rule as yesterday. Or the last lesson, I should say, not necessarily yesterday. So my graph should look like this. There's the graph of the absolute value of y equals the absolute value of x plus 4. And it's moving up 4 units. If I was to graph again, absolute value of y equals absolute value of x. Let's see if I can draw a better line here. Let's see here. There we go. It's much better. Absolute value graph. A little straighter. Now, if I was to do the absolute value of x minus 3, we're going to go down 3 units this time. So on this particular one, let's make this So 1, 2, 3, and scratch, and we'll try this. And scratch, and this, and I forgot to make a straight line, so there we go. So then you get the absolute value of okay. this one is y equals the absolute value of x. This one is y equals the absolute value of x minus 3. So it follows the same rules as the previous lesson did, the translations of the previous lesson. Also apply to all your absolute value functions. So once you can graph your absolute value function, it's actually pretty easy to, um, to be able to translate them. Okay, so same translations, instead of where there were parentheses on the last lesson, and now our absolute value symbols. So the same rules apply. You just, that's what I like about math. It's just it goes a little bit further each time, adds a little bit more detail, but doesn't change everything altogether. So we are going to look at all of these things just like we did 
the uh, last lesson. So if I'm going to combine a translation here, I have y equals the absolute value of x, and y equals the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 1. Now, I do not care if you draw in the parent function first and then translate it. Some people need to do that in order to be able to draw the translated function. And some people can just go straight to the translated function. I'll do both. The first one I'll draw both of them in, and the second one I will only draw the translated function, so it'll make it easier. All right, so let's do the absolute value of x. So let's see here, I want to do this for green. There it is. Here's a, the function of y over the absolute value of x. That one. There. Now, if I'm going to do this, this is going to go left two, and this is going to go up one. So I'm going to take every point, translate it two left and one up. So I'll start with the origin. I'll go two left and one up. From here, I don't need to translate any other points. I can just remember my slope is up one over one, and I can just make my v graph from that, and there's my new translated function. So as you can see, if you can find where your vertex is, it's actually very simple to translate a absolute value function. Whoops, I messed up. And let's go back. I did a common mistake that most people do. This is not left, it should be right. It should be right to and up one. That's a common mistake, and I tend to make it more often than I would like. Pay attention. If it's in the absolute value symbol, it does opposite what your brain thinks thinks it should be. So I should go right to and up one. So my graph should actually look like this. Let's fix that. Sorry about that. This goes through, but not everyone's perfect. And if it's a good idea to look at things before you move on, because as soon as I looked at that, I knew it was wrong. So this would be the equation of y equals the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 1. And then the green one is y equals the absolute value of x. So let's take a look at the next one. Letter B here. I'm going to move left three and down one. Okay. Left three, down one. Well, I know the vertex is normally at zero, zero. So I'm going to translate that vertex three units to the left and one unit down. So here's where my vertex is. Now all I have to do is go up one over one, up one over one. Make mirror images on the other side. And here's my graph. And that's the graph of the absolute value of y equals the absolute value of x plus 3 minus 1. You don't have to draw the parent function in every time. If you can do it without drawing the parent function, that's great. If you can't, make sure you label the parent function and then label the uh, transformation as well. All right, we've already talked about this. The right branch of the graph of y equals x, the absolute value of x has a slope of 1. The graph of y equals a times the absolute value of x, if a is greater than 0, is a stretch or compression. And if a is greater than 0, it's a stretch. If a is less than 0, it's a compression. Its right branch has a slope of a, and if you have, notice this is a reflection. Okay? The graph of y equals negative a absolute value of x is a reflection of, a, of that in the x-axis, and it's right, it's right in terms of slope of negative a. We've talked about that. We've talked about how the slopes on the right-hand side is a positive 1 over 1, and the left-hand side is a negative 1 over 1. So let's take a look at some graphs. A vertical stretch and compression. Let's compare y equals absolute value of x and y equals uh, negative 2 absolute value of x. And I'm actually going to draw the original one just because it's a little easier to compare. So if I was to draw the original one, Make sure this is right, make sure it's right, it's in green. So if I have, here's y equals the absolute value of x. Okay. Now I'm going to do negative 2 absolute value of x. So I'm doing two things to this. It's reflecting over the uh, y axis, maybe the x axis. Okay, this is a reflection. This is going to make it reflect over the x axis. It's also going to stretch it. Okay. So you do two things. Notice you'll never reflect an absolute value graph over the y-axis because it's going to just land right on top of itself again. 
and you guys if you, if you put a if I remember if I was reflected over the y-axis, I would put the negative inside of the absolute value, and that's just gonna make it that anyway. So you're never gonna reflect over a y-axis for an absolute value graph. You're gonna reflect over the x-axis, but not the y-axis. Alright, so now all I have to do is instead of uh, instead of using the fact that I have uh, well let's just take a look at something. Let's make a let's make a table. I'm gonna make a small table. I want to show you what, what works here. Let's say that x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. The absolute value of, that, of negative 2 is 2, times that by negative 2, you get negative 4. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, times that by negative 2, you get negative 2, times 0. And the absolute value of 1 is 1, multiplied by negative 2 is negative 2, and so negative 4. So if I was to put these points on the graph, okay, I have 0, 0, negative 2, Negative four is there. Its counterpart is there. And okay, one negative two is here and here. So this is what this graph looks like. Now I don't like to make tables every time, but I made a table for this one just to check to the point. Notice here in the green graph, the slope was up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, four, down over down over down over. Negative one upon negative one. Okay. Let's take a look at the slope of this graph. Okay. The left branch is up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. The right branch is down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Okay. Which means this negative 2 is the slope. So once I have the vertex, all I have to do is apply the slope to draw my branches. Okay. I don't have to make a table anymore. I don't have to do this fancy table anymore if I know what my slope is. Okay. And that helps me figure things out. It helps me to realize, wait a second. That negative 2 becomes the slope of my graph, and therefore I don't want to have to make a table. So, on the second one, the letter B here, I'm going to do my absolute value of x, but my slope now is going to be negative 2 thirds. So, y equals the absolute value of x. There's no plus or minus, so our vertex is going to be at 0, 0. So, I'm going to plot that point first here, 0, 0. Now I'm just going to go down to right 3. So here's that point, down to right 3. Its counterpoint would be here. From here I'm going to go down to right 3. So there, so this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I go 6 units to the left, and here is my graph. And notice since the fraction is a wider graph, okay, the blue graph here on the left for letter A is a, is a stretch. And the fractional graph, the graph from the, the red one, is a compression. Okay. So this is the graph of y equals negative 2 thirds absolute value of x. And so once you can find your vertex, absolute value graphs are actually very, very simple to graph. And these two things here lead to a general form of the equation. You combine the stretches and the, and the compressions with the equation of the translation to write a general form of the absolute value function. The general form of the absolute value function is y equals a absolute value x minus h and your absolute value plus k. The stretch or compression factor is the absolute value of a. Okay. The vertex is located at h k and the axis of symmetry is the line x equals h. Okay. So, Let's take a look at this. It says, compare y equals negative 2, absolute value of x plus 2 plus 3 with the parent function. Without graphing, where the vertex, axis, symmetry, and transformation of the parent function. So, this isn't too bad. My vertex, remember, my vertex, if you look back at the parent function up here, it says the vertex is located at hk. Okay. So, if I have the equation, y equals negative 2 absolute value of x plus 2 plus 3. Okay. This is h and this is k. Which means my vertex is equal to negative 2, 3. Remember, it's the opposite inside the absolute value of what you think it should be. My axis of symmetry, then, is the line of x equals h. So my axis is x equals negative 2. Okay. And so this graph is translated 
two units left, three units up, and stretched by a factor of negative two. Okay. Uh, stretched by a factor of two and then plotted across the x-axis. That's a lot of things to say, but we'll do that. And it's translated two units left, three units up, stretched by a factor of two, and reflected over the x-axis. Oh, I can spell this like this. That's terrible. have to memorize the general form of the equation for absolutely something. Very, very important to know. The more you use it, the better chances you have <laughs> that you will memorize it. Alright, so let's compare y equals negative 2 at the value of x minus 1 minus 3 and do the same thing. Okay. Remember h, k, so my vertex is 1, negative 3, the axis of symmetry is x equals h, so that would be x equals 1. It is right 3 units down, it should be right 1 unit down 3 units. Okay, so translate it. Right 1 unit down 3 units. Uh, stretch by a factor of two. And reflect it across the x-axis. Now, can we write an absolute value function if we're given the graph? So here are two graphs. We're going to write the absolute value function on these graphs. The first thing you want to do is identify your vertex. That's the easiest thing to do. So if I also look at this point right here, this is at negative 1, negative 2. Okay. So the point is negative 1, negative 2. So the vertex is negative 1, negative 2. So that means h equals negative 1 and k equals negative 2. The second thing you want to do is identify A, the stretch of compression, by looking at the slope of the line. So let's take a look at the slope of this line. Okay, if I look at this, I notice it's down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, so the slope is 1. Okay, so the slope equals negative 1. So that means A equals negative 1. Okay. And the third step is to write the equation. Okay, so now that you have all that, we need to write the equation. And if you remember, the equation Okay, the equation is y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. So let's just plug it in. y equals my a is negative 1, so I have a negative 1, absolute value of x minus a minus 1. I'm going to write it in that way for a minute and I'll fix it. Okay? Plus k plus a negative 2. I'll write it in that way. So now I'll simplify it. I just wrote it in exactly as it looked. Now let's simplify it. Y equals negative absolute value of x plus 1 minus 2. And there's your right. And you can have the 1 in front of the absolute value where you can just have a negative sign. I prefer the negative sign only. Some people prefer the negative 1. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change it. Okay, so that's a simply. That's all you have to do. Look at the vertex. Identify your slope. Once you've done that, you've figured out h, k, and a, and you can just slide it into your equation. So let's set it over here. Okay, let's identify my vertex. My vertex is right here, which looks like it's a 2, 1. So h equals 2, k equals 1. Okay, let's identify the stretch. Okay, so I'm going, if I look at this, I'm going up 1. 1, 2, 3, right, 4. Looks like up 1, right, 4. Um, 
from the layup. So it's up one by four, so my slope is one four. So A is one four. Knowing that, I can write my equation now. Okay, so y equals a absolute value of x minus h minus a. That's okay. It's going to be plus a one because the fact that the positive. So one fourth absolute value of x minus two plus one. Simple as that. That's absolute value graphs. Absolute value graphs are actually really easy to graph and fairly simple to work with once you understand that they are simply mirror images, each side is a mirror image of each other. 